Drop a like and do share. Leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos. Hi friends. Welcome back to the course on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering offered by Eripedia World. Previous lecture we discussed two mechanisms for strengthening of materials. One was grain size reduction and second was solid solution strengthening. Today we will see the third type of mechanism that can be used for strengthening of material. Today's focus will be on what is known as strain hardening. Now strain hardening we will discuss what exactly it is but uh, to begin with strain hardening is alternatively known as work hardening or cold working. Basically the name suggests that it is a hardening process right and this is hardened due to internal strain being generated. Okay. Alternatively this name means work hardening means you work on the material that is you impart energy into the material as a result the material hardens. Cold working the name is a bit different from the other two. This means that the working or the deformation of the material is carried out for this process but that deformation needs to be carried out at relatively low temperature. You cannot go at elevated temperature for strain hardening to occur. That's why cold working. Now the idea is that uh, ductile materials if you strain harden it then the ductile material will become stronger due to continuous plastic deformation. So the idea is continuous plastic deformation leads to strengthening of the body. Okay, we understand that uh, continuous plastic deformation leads to strengthening. But why should it lead to strengthening? What exactly is happening when you are continuously deforming the material? When you start to deform a material, before starting to deform a material, the material has a specific number of dislocations. Okay, in the order of 10 to power 4 to 10 to power 6 dislocation density range but when you start to work hard in the material you are plastically deforming the material as a result what is happening the number of dislocations starts to build within the material plastic deformation leads to generation of new dislocations effective number of dislocations within the material is increasing now this increase in dislocation density the dislocation density reaches around 10 to power 10 when sufficient work hardening is done now this increase in dislocation density leads to dislocation dislocation interaction. Even in the initial stage when dislocation density was like this 10 power 4 to 10 power 6 there were dislocation dislocation interaction and there was strengthening due to that. But now since the dislocation density has further increased the amount of dislocation dislocation interaction will be much more than initially and more the number of dislocation dislocation interaction more will it be difficult for the dislocations to travel through the material more will be the pinning down of dislocation more will be the energy requirement and the stress requirement for the dislocation to move and further plastic deformation to happen so see what exactly is happening you start to deform a material dislocation density starts to increase and that starts to try to prevent further deformation of the material. So the deformation of the material kind of restricts further deformation from happening by increasing the dislocation density and uh, leading to dislocation dislocation strain field interaction. This we have already discussed. The idea was that uh, two dislocations of the same sign will repel each other right two dislocations of same sign will repel each other and two dislocations of opposite sign will actually attract and cancel but since the dislocation density is much much higher there is a lot of chances that opposite dislocations will interact right so this is the basic idea or basic physics behind strain hardening now the amount of strain hardening that you put uh, into a material 
is uh, defined by the percent of cold work you do on the material now what does percentage of cold work mean percentage of cold work refers to the percentage of reduction in area okay or percentage of reduction in thickness of a material strain hardening there can be different ways to deform one of the standard way is to cold roll the material so cold rolling what you do basically you have rolls through which you pass the material right so this thickness let's say is t1 but this uh, distance is less than t1 therefore it kind of thins down on passing through the rolls so this becomes t2 where t2 is less than t1 and by continuously passing the material through smaller and smaller roll more and more work hardening is being done and this reduction in area uh, rather the re reduction in thickness manifest itself as an increase in area in the other direction because volume needs to be constant and that is kind of the percentage of cold work that you are doing on the material okay now that we have the fundamentals of strain hardening let us see what is the influence of strain hardening a material this is an example which i have taken up this is uh, 20 three stainless steel okay and uh, here what we see this axis the x-axis is percentage cold work or reduction in area so here we have done reduction in area plotted against three things one is uh, what is the ductility measurement or percentage elongation what is the yield strength and what is the tensile strength previous sli slide one thing I forgot to mention that due to strain hardening the strength increases right strength increases but the ductility decreases ductility decreases so this is the compromise you have to do while strain hardening you lose ductility that is seen here as the percentage cold work is increasing the ductility or percentage elongation is continuously decreasing from about 50% and 0% cold work to about 10% or 50% cold work on the other hand both the strength the 0.2% yield strength and uh, the ultimate tensile strength both seem to increase continuously as the percentage of cold work is increasing so this uh, gives you a clear idea about the effect of strain hardening on the different characteristic of the material now let us discuss something which is known as recovery recrystallization and grain growth what we have seen till now is that the strain hardening is taking place that is leading to an increase in strength but it is compromising with the ductility of the material so by continuous strain hardening you are actually reducing the ductility of the material to maybe unusable range the ductility becomes so less that you cannot use it to any practical application so there has to be some method by which you can kind of improve the ductility by compromising on the yield strength a little bit but the effective uh, result is that the yield strength is not compromised by that much as the improvement of ductility take place so that is done by the process of recovery and recrystallization what happens during plastic deformation let us see what exactly is happening during plastic deformation when you plastically deform a material several kind of changes are taking place in the material first is there is a change in shape of the grains so normally speaking grains are equiaxed so they are more or less circular kind of shaped circular shaped now if you pass this through roll if you uh, strain harden this material what will happen is that it will elongate right and the equiax shape now becomes elongated grains you no longer have equiaxed grain the 
elongation takes place in the direction of the rolling so if the rolling was done in this direction the grains becomes elongated in this direction so basically plastic deformation leads to change in the grain shape the first thing uh, this is an observable difference under a microscope obviously as we discussed it leads to strain hardening due to increase in number of dislocation and that is the third thing that there is an increase in dislocation density okay now there is a treatment known as annealing treatment which tries to undo some of the bad effect of plastic deformation in annealing treatment what we'll do we'll see a different type of heat treatments later in details but to give you a uh, idea in annealing treatment you basically expose the material to a higher temperature and that higher temperature leads to increase in the diffusion processes within the body and that leads to certain phenomena which we'll see now what are the things that can happen first is recovery will take place in the material second is recrystallization will happen and finally once recrystallization is done then grain growth will take place let's see each of them individually okay so this is again we had a material we passed it through strain hardening processes or cold working processes we got elongated grains over here okay and as a result of this uh, cold working what happened is that we had an increase in strength and reduction in ductility now the first stage that we have is called the recovery stage in the recovery stage you will not have any observable difference in the microstructure the microstructure will remain elongated as such but what we'll observe is that the ductility is marginally improving the strength more or less remains the same okay in the second stage that is the recrystallization stage what will be observed is that new grains start to pop up from the old elongated grains new equiaxed grains starts to pop up at different locations and with that the strength of the material starts to reduce but the ductility starts to improve drastically and once we have complete renewal of grains new grains then the third stage will happen where we will have grain growth grain growth starts to take place smaller grains combine together to form larger grains okay and how is this process taking place this is basically a uh, increase in temperature at lower temperature the recovery stage will be there once you reach sufficient temperature recrystallization will be there and if you leave it exposed at that temperature for longer time then grain growth will take place fine let us see each of them individually now recovery in the stage of recovery what is happening is that you have already exposed it to a little high temperature temperature has been increased and this increase in temperature will lead to a reduction in internal strain but there is no observable microstructural change no observable microstructural change but there is a reduction in internal strain how is uh, that possible how is the internal strain reduced or internal stress reduced that is because at a higher temperature there is enhanced atomic diffusion okay the atoms start to diffuse faster and that results in slight reduction in dislocation density and uh, which as a result leads to a reduction in internal strain so this is the idea about recovery this is the first stage the next stage which we go is known as recrystallization as i have shown in the diagram couple of slides back in the stage of recrystallization what is happening out of the old grains from the old grains which were elongated having a lot of strain within it grains new grains start to pop up 
nucleation of new grains start to take place okay and then this new grains start to grow and uh, fresh refined new grain structure is developed in this stage now you will ask why does new grains nucleate new grains nucleate because the old grains have a lot of dislocation that means it has a lot of energy stored within it the high temperature at which the material is exposed gives enough activation energy to produce fresh grains which have very low strain within it thereby it leads to a reduction in the total energy of the system which is a favorable process that's why new grains originate and that new grains spread through the material taking up the whole material and providing very finely distributed equiaxed newly generated grains right this results in two things this results in a increase in ductility of the material but compromises with the strength of the material the strength decreases and the ductility increases but the decrease in strength is uh, not very high the increase in ductility is much better and compromises much more than the loss in strength why is there a uh, decrease in strength the decrease in strength is because the dislocation density is reducing right but there is a the idea is that since the grains are very very fine then by hall pitch relation even now the strength of the material will be quite good okay the increase in time or the temperature increases the extent of recrystallization if you expose the material expose this elongated material elongated grains for higher temperature or more time then the recrystallization can reach towards completion that is the whole specimen can become finely re renewed fine grains right now there is something known as recrystallization temperature recrystallization temperature is the temperature at which recrystallization can complete in exactly 1 hour so what is the temperature where you need to leave the material for 1 hour for the recrystallization to be complete that is known as recrystallization temperature now there are several factors on which recrystallization temperature will depend the two most important factors are one what is the extent of cold work of the material and second is what are the alloying elements or the amount of alloying present in the material what do we mean by the extent of cold work see if you have a material which is 10% cold worked and you have another material which is 50% cold worked what will happen is this will have less strain this will have more strain therefore the 50% cold worked material since it has more strain it will have more drive within it more driving force for the recrystallization to occur therefore uh, more paradoxically what will happen a material which has more cold work will actually be easier to recrystallize more more cold work means easier to recrystallize therefore even at lower temperature more cold work material recrystallizes so high cold work percent low recrystallization temperature okay and uh, the second criteria was alloying the alloying of uh, a metal leads to a increase in recrystallization temperature the amount of alloying results in a increase of recrystallization temperature fine final stage is the green growth now that we had recovery and recrystallization we have fresh grains within the body which are strain free and nicely distributed equiaxed grains so what now if we keep the material exposed to high temperature even now 
then what will happen is that smaller grains will be consumed by larger grains. The smaller grains will be consumed by larger grains and effectively the grain size, the average grain size will increase. Why is that so? This is so because the grain boundary is a region of high energy. Grain boundary is high energy region. So the material wants to get rid of energy. What it will do? It will try to reduce the grain boundary area. How it can do that? It can do that by consuming smaller grains into larger grains. Larger the average size, less is the effective grain size. Uh, rather less is the effective energy due to the grain boundaries. Okay. How does the grain uh, growth happens? Grain growth happens by short range diffusion processes. So what is happening is if you have a grain here with atoms all around here and another grain here with atoms all around here. So basically this grain boundary will start to move this way, atoms move the other way and by this atomic dis diffusion basically this grain boundary is moving further out and the grain size is increasing. So as we see that short range diffusion is involved here, therefore grain growth occurs at high temperature. It is a kinetic process. So high temperature and more time favors grain growth. But the idea is that grain growth is actually not good for the material. By hall page relation we already know fine grain means more ductile and more strength. Therefore we would rather have fine grain than coarse grain. So we would like to avoid grain growth. Therefore once we have recrystallization done we would like to reduce the temperature so that grain growth does not take place. Okay. So this brings us to a conclusion of the discussion. What we have seen today is uh, we began with the strengthening mechanism known as strain hardening. We saw that it leads to increase in dislocation density thereby increase in strength. But increase in strength comes with a compromise of decrease in ductility. In order to better the ductility we saw that we can go for recovery recrystallization and grain growth. Which in recovery stage there is a reduction in strain. In the recrystallized stage there is nucleation of new grains and uh, the new grains take over the old uh, stressed grains and in the grain growth basically smaller grains are consumed by larger grains. So the next class will discuss couple of other mechanisms which are used for strengthening. Till the next class have a great day. Goodbye.